As a kid, my dream job was to be a fisherman. Simply because I loved fishing so much that I wanted to do it all of the time. I really love the way that a fishing rod or a trap can connect you to a world hidden below the surface of the ocean. I remember hearing stories of lingcod caught in the tidal areas around the Sunshine Coast that stretched as long as the box of a full-size pickup truck. They feed on almost anything that swims within a range and share a habitat with other ancient rockfish. For some, a curiosity for aquatic environments leads not only to a fishing obsession, but also a lifelong career. Yeah, I've, I've always loved the ocean. I've always been curious about what's down there. I mean, when I go fishing, because I don't know a ton about the ocean, I feel like it's, it's like Christmas morning. You never know what you're actually going to get or what you're going to find. And, and to me, that's always been one of the, the more appealing things that every time I do go out on the ocean, I feel like there's an opportunity to see something brand new and, and experience something brand new. I think my most memorable encounter stems from, uh, I don't know, as a maybe 16 or 17 kayaking around Haida Gwaii and I was on a beach, I had just finished lunch and sitting there looking out at the ocean and there was a, a school of bait fish and you could see them kind of you know doing their thing on the surface and then all of a sudden something was just smashing right through the middle of this bait ball and I couldn't see what it was. It's close enough to shore that I could get it with a buzz bomb and on my second cast I got whatever it was and it just turned around and went straight for Japan and I never saw it and I lost everything. I couldn't fish for like four days. Yeah, I'd say that's probably my, my favorite fun beach kind of ocean experience. What do you think it was? Probably a huge Chinook. Giant Chinook. Yeah. Yeah, over 100 pounds maybe. Nah, no, I, was, I mean, I was 16, it was probably 20 pounds and I just couldn't handle it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so my background is all in, in freshwater fisheries, but in the, I have done a little bit of work in the marine environment with cutthroat trout and uh, we lost everything like all of our equipment gone not so much because anything happened but simply because it's the ocean like you could drop you know a toonie off the dock here and good luck finding it and you can probably still see it from the dock but getting down there and actually finding it is, is really difficult and then when you start thinking about that in terms of a fish or an animal that can move around and trying to find that and track it and understand what it's doing in an environment that you just can't see and experience or really spend time in, easily it's, I mean, the, the problems are compounded. <clears throat> yeah, one of my favorite professors in, uh, in university, when we got to talking about the ocean, it was a salmon ecology class, and we got to talking about the ocean, and he basically said, we're not going to talk about the ocean. It's a black box. We know what goes in. We don't know what happens and we know what comes out. But everything in between is, is a mystery. And I mean, we are learning more and more about what happens, especially with salmon all the time. But it's very slow and it's very challenging and, and very, very costly. You drop a line into a world beneath the water. And if you're lucky, you will pull something up. I've seen some pretty large lingcod over the years, but I've heard rumors of lingcod reaching monstrous proportions. These giants have been documented at over 1,000 feet below the sea and have been caught weighing over 80 pounds. They can live up to around 25 years of age and they are only found on the west coast of North America. Because of their anatomical design and highly aggressive feeding behavior, they are capable of swallowing prey up to 80% of their size. They like to hide in rocky areas with significant current where they can ambush passing prey. It is in these areas that some of the largest lingcod are rumored to live. And so it is to such a place that my friend Eric and I are heading to with our fishing gear. Okay, we're in, we're on top of the rock. There's big fish at 138. They're just like the ultimate ambush predator down there. They just hang out in these rock caves in these currenty areas and just annihilate anything that comes their way. They can eat things up to 80% of their uh, body weight and length. So that means 
A hundred pound lingcod, which they can get that big, could eat an 80 pound kid. And I've heard tales of just that happening. Doesn't really make you want to jump down there and go swimming, does it? Yeah. Better? Can't tell yet. It's coming up a little lumpier. John, maybe uh, the there he is. I think this one might be too small. Gonna have to let them go to grow a bit bigger, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Still fun. Just gotta be a bit bigger for the dinner table. But those things blow my mind every time I see them. They got these crazy teeth near the bottom. Linger. Yeah. Yeah. Good. He's in this one. So we even. That is. It's 65. Great. Keeper. These things, I've heard reports of getting over 10 feet long. You know when you like feel a tug on your rod, you're down deep, you just don't really know what it is. And there's always that like insane curiosity to get it to the surface. Something that crushes my heart every time is when you have something big and you lose it before you, you don't even know. see it. Yeah. You. I don't go towards the rod. Because if that's a fish, it's a fucking monster. Oh. No! There she goes. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Because in your head you're like, I don't know, was that a, you know, a world record size fish? Was it a fish I'd never seen before? Was it a sea serpent? You know, did I snag a mermaid by the tail? Mother All nature. possibilities. Yeah. So, or was it a log? Yeah. Never uh, know. That was huge. Whatever it was. Yeah, you lost a bit of line there. Didn't you? Where did it snap? Oh, yeah. Like inside. That was your lucky lure. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a really good lingcod. <laughs> okay, you got the neck. Well, usually they go bananas when you get break the surface. That is a good fish. Good job, Biggie. Oh, shit. There we go. That's the one nice. we were after. That is a behemoth. <laughs> That's a lot of fish and chips right there. Ooh. <laughs> these things always terrify me. They, th these lures don't last long in their mouths. Nice done, Captain. <laughs> beauty. <laughs> Amazing. It's crazy to think of these things getting like five times this size. That's it for this spot. The tide's starting to turn, so we got to get out of here before the current gets too hairy. But there's lots of other places to fish and lots of other sea to explore. Sea. To see. Sea to Tons sea. of sea to see. Sea to see. Did you have fun? Loved it. How much gear did you lose? Well, I'm definitely supporting the local economy out here. Let's uh, put it that way. Yeah, I think uh, 
definitely supporting the economy today. The local, the local fish shops. Did you uh, ma <laughs> manage to hook anything other than bottom? Yeah, but I think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think that we've definitely shown that uh, my fishing skills are consistent. They yeah. don't deteriorate with time. <laughs> Wouldn't say they improve. <laughs> but I still have a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, yeah, I mean, it's to be expected. You're going to lose gear every time you come out. If you cry over every $20 lure you're going to lose, it's going to be a long day. But we didn't do too bad. We lost, what, six lures? Maybe, not Maybe. even, five? Yeah, I mean, yeah, and if you ask my wife, they cost $5, so $30 would be pretty good. Yeah.